New at 11, pregnancy and cannibalism. Those are two words you don't often hear together. It's a tough topic that became reality for a local woman who said it could have been avoided if a local pet store would have been more careful. With complaints piling up and restrictive new legislation pending, 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears takes a look inside the controversial world of exotic pets. What an awesome looking little creature. Yeah, she's beautiful. Doris, the African pygmy hedgehog, was Jordan Harper's Christmas gift from her husband. But that's her typical look, is this with her eyebrows down because she's very sassy. Bought for nearly $200 at Exotic Pets on Decatur and Smoke Ranch. But Jordan's joy. Um, I was holding her in bed and she started bleeding and I heard a scream. Was short lived. So I held her and a baby fell out. And um, so then I put her in the cage and another baby fell out. She contacted her vet right away. Then I went in to check on her and she had a baby in her mouth. By the time she got Doris to the doctor, both babies were gone. Vet records from Lone Mountain Animal Hospital show Doris ate her young. I was terrified. Um, it was really traumatic for me. Exotic Pets owner Ken Foos initially saw the surprise pregnancy as good news. My first thought was congratulations. And, and, and then I said, I'll buy the babies back. Well, their babies were gone. She didn't want to, um, return the animal. I really didn't have any other option. I don't know what else I could have done. Foose didn't know the hedgehog was pregnant. He does know why it cannibalized its babies. If you disturb these animals, especially hedgehogs, when they have babies, they will choose to reconsume the babies rather than let a predator have them. And that's what happened here. We're just big predators to these hedgehogs. Like. He said if he'd known Doris was pregnant, he never would have sold her in the first place, there. but admits he didn't have one simple safeguard, keeping males and females separated. Exotic Pets does not have a breeding permit. Keeping male and female animals together could be considered breeding, but they are making changes since what happened with Doris. These two cages, though empty now, will be used to separate male and female hedgehogs once they get more to sell. And if he had known the hedgehog was about to have babies... We would have kept him and raised him up and sold him. That's just more money for us. There's the key word, money. Emphasis on profit is a common criticism of exotic pets. Just ask Johnny Anderson and Justin Hernandez. I felt like they just wanted my money and they just didn't care after that, you know. All Justin wanted for his 10th birthday was a tarantula. So they told me I had to have like good grades. I had to be good in school. His dad says he did all that and earned the pet they named Sprocket. She would usually put her webs like under there too. But she died less than a month after he got her. Um, really sad and I didn't really know what to do at that point. You know, he's in tears. He's definitely experienced his first personal loss. But to see my kid like that was really hard. When Johnny called the store. I got a very abrasive and rude response from who I was told was the manager and they hung up on me. Foose says many animals he sells end up dying due to stress or environmental factors once they leave the store. Deaths happen. It's unavoidable. If you're going to deal with, we have 3,000 animals in this building. If you're going to deal with that many animals, you're going to have something die on a daily basis. To illustrate, he tells an unusual story about a customer who used to buy a rabbit from him every Sunday. He's an old man who takes a rabbit every Sunday and buys it from us, and he takes it home and he butchers it, and he cooks it up and he eats it. And that's his Sunday dinner, just like it was when his grandma and his parents raised him in Mississippi. He says it's no different than selling rabbits for snake food, but it's the kind of thing that raises hackles in the animal welfare world. The animal rights issue and the animal welfare issue, and they aren't the same thing, and they clash. It's kind of a, a business that is loosely regulated. That's one of the problems. Stacia that. Newman of Nevada Political Action for Animals has tried to get authorities to take action against exotic pets. Complaints to animal control have been ruled unsubstantiated and USDA inspection records over the past few years show very few violations. 
Federal authorities have cited problems with veterinary and animal inventory records, bedding that was subject to contamination, and dirty cages. But the most recent USDA inspection from May of 2018 found no issues. Yelp reviews paint a different picture, including complaints about poor conditions, sick animals, and minimal care. One customer who sent us this video said she witnessed outright abuse. Someone videotaped that? That's yes. horrible. Fu says the reptile in the video is a red tegu. Um, she hits it on the head, and then she picks it up kind of by the neck like that. Is that okay? I don't know what she, what she was doing there, but I also fired her. I'm not saying she should have smacked it, but we have to let them know that we're humans and not food. He says she picked it up by the neck so it wouldn't bite her and then shows us hey, fatso. how hard tegus are to handle. He wants. He doesn't want to be held, does he? No, but that's okay. He's got to be held because sooner or later someone will buy him. That's been his business for 27 years, and Foos is prepared to fight to keep on going. A new state law being debated right now would further restrict exotic pet sales, but would likely have little impact on the type of animals exotic pets sells because they aren't considered dangerous under Nevada's legal definition. Darcy Spears, 13, investigates.